Good morning, and welcome to Clifford H. Marshall Elementary School. My name is Heather Patch. I'm the principal of Clifford Marshall School, and I'm thrilled to be here today with our almost 600 kiddos to kick off the Scholastic United States of Readers program in Massachusetts. This morning, you're going to hear a few words from our elected officials and from Scholastic, who made this day possible. Then we're gonna have a very special presentation from our superstar guest and award-winning author and situate native, Jerry Pallotta. Okay, before we start, kiddos, I just wanna talk to you about how to be a polite audience. It's been a long time since we've been in this room together. So make sure that you're please sitting weight on your bottom. You're gonna stay right in your spot so that the people behind you can see. Your eyes should be looking up here. Your voices should be off, listening ears on. Put them on, okay, perfect. That looks perfect. Oh, voices are off, remember? Yep, perfect, perfect. Zip it, lock it, put it in your pocket, okay. Before I hand it over to Scholastic's Judy Newman, I would like to thank everybody who made the funding for this exciting program possible and recognize some of our special guests. Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Speaker Ron Mariano, Representative Tacky Chan, Mayor Tom Koch, Superintendent Kevin Mulvey, Assistant Superintendent Dr. Aaron Perkins, Counselor Richard Ash, Counselor Scott Campbell, Counselor Ian Kane, School Committee Vice Chair Tina M. Cahill, Catherine Hubley, Paul Brigoli, and Courtney Perdios. Let's hear it for all of our special guests. All right, without further ado, please welcome Judy Newman, Chief Impact Officer at Scholastic. Hi everybody. Happy Thursday. I am Judy Newman. I am actually also the reader in chief of Scholastic in addition to being chief impact officer. So I have three questions for you. How many of you got one of these flyers? Every single kid in the world, in the room? And how many books did you choose that you want to read from the flyers? Two. <laughs> Okay, here's the bonus question. What are you going to do when those scholastic boxes arrive next week with your books? What are you going to do with those books? <laughs> it feels to me like we have a room full of readers here, which is exactly what we want <clears throat> to talk about. Okay, so first of all, I want to congratulate everybody in the room because you are now all officially part of the United States states of readers. Okay? You should give yourself a hand. <clears throat> so five times. You did that once already. You chose your two books, but four more times. For five altogether, you're going to be choosing two more books over the year, so you're going to end up with ten brand new books that you choose, that you want to read, that you can bring home and make your own home library. And so you can really declare, I am a reader. And your teachers, who are wonderful, um, everybody in this room, everybody's going to get 25 free books for their classroom library to share with you. New titles to learn about. So we're excited. You're also going to meet special authors, have fun events, some parties. Authors like, who's coming here today? Jerry Pallotta. And at the end of the day, after he speaks, you're all getting a free copy of this book, Who Would Win Lobster Versus Crab? And it has a special United States of Readers message in it because Jerry chose 
lobster versus crab because we are in the home of lobsters and crabs here in Quincy. Now, I'm almost done. None of this would have been possible if it was not for speaker Ron Mariano, um, who is truly a champion of literacy. And I learned that uh, speaker Mariano was actually a teacher in this school, in your own very own school. And so he understands how important it is that every single child has this same opportunity to choose their own books that they want to read. Okay, just like you guys all did. And now everybody in my office back at Scholastic and the United States of Readers and our brand new nonprofit called Impact Reading Inc. I know that's a lot of names. We're so grateful to Speaker Mariano, to Governor Healy, the Healy Driscoll administration, and everybody else who's been supporting of this, uh, your local representatives, Ayer and Chan, and Mayor Koch, whose reputation preceded him. I grew up in Massachusetts and I heard about what an amazing mayor he is. So thank you, all of you, and our new friends in Quincy. So with our book experts from Scholastic, authors like Jerry, the support from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, private philanthropists, your teachers, and everybody coming together. You guys are gonna be the beginning of solving what we have in this country, which is a literacy crisis. And really, 70% of kids across the country cannot read well by third grade. That's a problem. So we're very excited to launch the United States of Readers first, Commonwealth of Massachusetts is kicking this off. We're rolling it out to every state in the country, but Massachusetts is first, the first state in the country. Quincy is the first city in the first state. And your school, the Clifford Marshall School, is the first school in the first city in the first state of the United States of Readers. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Judy. I would now like to welcome speaker Ron Mariano to the podium. Thank you. It's good to be first, isn't it? Congratulations, the first in the country. You are very special. You are very, very special. And I'm honored to be here today to kick this off. This whole program is new. And you are the first beneficiaries of getting the two books, your first choice. Then there'll be five more chances to pick two. And by that time, you'll all be excellent readers. You'll all be reading. What happens is you build a habit. When I was a Title I teacher, and it wasn't exactly this school, because this school wasn't built when I was first started teaching. There was, there was another school right where we're standing now. It had a different name, but I was in that school. I wasn't in this school, and there were kids just like you coming through my classroom, and I was trying to get them to read and get them to be interested in reading. Because if you can read, there isn't anything you can't tackle. There isn't anything you can't learn. It opens up a whole set of opportunities for you to, to learn about places you might want to visit, about things you might want to see, about people you might want to learn about, and about careers you might want to pursue. All these things come without a teacher telling you to learn anything. They'll come when you take an interest in reading. So I am thrilled that we got the opportunity to kick this program off here in my neighborhood. I live, well, I hate to admit I could have walked here. And, <laughs> and, and, and say, and, and save my carbon footprint, but I, I didn't do it. I, I promise the next time I come, I'll walk. Um, but again, it is an honor to be here with all of you kids today, and I hope you all pick great books and enjoy reading every one of the, the books that you're gonna get. 
So again, get his, you're going to get 10. Think about that. You get two now, then you're going to get... Well, we're going to have a private conversation. I'll be, I'll, be with the, I'll be with the rest of you in a minute. Again, I hope you enjoy reading your books. Congratulations, kids. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this time, I would like to welcome Representative Tacky Chan. Good morning, everyone. Th thank you for having me here and the, talking about the importance of, of this incredible program to encourage reading. Uh, uh, I do claim English as my first language, however, when I was your age and younger, I actually did not speak English. Actually, I came from a Chinese-speaking household. And one of the major barriers of entry to school was actually reading, not just speaking, it was reading. And programs like this is incredibly important because it does, indeed, as the speaker says, open a gateway to a whole new world that you've never seen before, a much more broader horizon beyond anything you can watch on television or in any kind of video because it excites your imagination of things that could be, things you may want to be. And that's why it's such an important program for the legislature to support and fund. And being the very first school to open a new imagination is incredibly important. And I must say that I'm somewhat jealous because I would also like to know who would win, a lobster versus a crab. <laughs> Uh, but most importantly, uh, it is the, uh, you who would win, and all of us will, because this will give you the opportunity to build a library of new dreams and ideas that hopefully uh, will become better ideas for you to be up here instead of any of us to talk about tomorrow. So thank you, kids, and uh, talk to you all later. Thank you so much, Representative Chan. I would now like to welcome the mayor, Tom Koch, to speak. Do you love your principal? Yeah. Is she doing a good job? <laughs> How about your teachers, all your teachers? Let's have a hand for your teachers. It's a pleasure for me to join with you along with uh, my colleagues in government. This is truly what it's all about. When, uh, when I stand and talk with the speaker and uh, representative, the city councils and school community members, we all work very hard. And there's nothing more important we do in government than helping to prepare you for life. So reading is a major, major part of that. Whatever you're gonna do in life, reading is so important. I can remember a third grade teacher, Mrs. Keneally, she used to read short stories. I don't know if they're still around. Pippi Longstocking, um, Mr. Pine's Purple House. There are a number of short stories, but my point is that's when I kind of fell in love with getting my own book and reading my own book. Now today, you guys have more pressure against you because there's demands for other things and social media and all those things. I'm telling you, the best thing you can do is to pick a book that you want to read and it's going to open up a whole new world for each of you. So I want to thank the, the sponsors for this, the great work they've done in providing the resources to allow this to happen. Uh, and I want to thank especially Speaker Mariano, who did grow up in this neighborhood. And he mentioned he was a teacher. He was also a school committee member. And as Speaker of the House, he fights for money for education. Because we can't do it alone as a city, although the city council is very generous uh, with tax monies, but the state provides us with local aid to help you with the resources in the classroom. So I want to thank again, Mr. Speaker, because he's truly an educator at heart. Um, so with that, I thank you all. I encourage you to read, pick some good books, and you're going to begin a new journey that's going to open up a whole new world. God bless you, kids. Thank you, Mayor Koch. Please now welcome the superintendent, Mr. Kevin Mulvey. Good morning, everyone. Such an exciting day, and it's so great to be with you again here today. Could we just have another round of applause for all of our speakers? Such a great job. Thank you. 
I have so many people to thank today, and I just want to make sure that I, I cover everyone. So on behalf of uh, students and teachers, I want to extend our ha heartfelt thanks to our amazing partners who have generously provided books for our elementary schools through the United States of Readers program, an amazing program. Specifically, thank you again to Speaker Mariano and the state delegation, to Mayor Koch, the Quincy School Committee, the Quincy City Council, Dewey Square, and of course the representatives from Scholastic Publishing, and of course our author, Jerry Pilata, who I know you're all waiting to talk to, so I'll keep my uh, comments short. And of course, all of these individuals made today's program possible, so I can't thank them enough. Of course, we believe that literacy is a fundamental building block for success, and your partnership plays a crucial role in making that belief a reality for all of our students. Together, we are planting seeds of knowledge that will flourish for years and years to come. Once again, thank you for your generosity and support. We look forward to continuing this wonderful partnership and sharing the joy of reading with all of our students. Again, thank you all and enjoy this great day. Thank you. All right, thank you, Superintendent Mulvey. And finally, our superstar and author of Who Would Win, Mr. Jerry Pilata. Hi there, all you kids. Thanks for having me. Uh, I am Jerry Pilata. I grew up in the Boston area. I grew up in Medford, and then, but I spent my whole summer in situate at my grandma's house. When I was at the house, I learned all about ocean creatures. And you know what happened? When I had my own kids, I have four kids, 11 grandkids. When I had my own kids, I thought of writing my own books. So that's what happened to me. But I'm thrilled to be here today, and I thank everyone that has already spoken. And uh, thank you to the uh, Massachusetts delegation and the governor and the lieutenant governor and everyone who voted to help the United States of Reading. I'm really thrilled to be here. When someone said to me, why, did, why didn't you, uh, what do you think of the United States of Reading? I said, I wish I thought of it. So there you go. But um, I grew up in Situate in the summer and um, I learned all about all the ocean creatures. And then in my head, I thought, I'm gonna write a book of ocean creatures for kids. So that's what happened. Later on, I really love catching crabs. I really love catching lobsters. And one day I said, I'm gonna write a book, Lobster versus Crab. So all you kids are gonna get that book. Um, so thank you everybody, thanks for having me. And what happened to me when I was younger is I became a reader. So when I'm here today talking to you kids in a few minutes, I want, I want to uh, encourage you all to become a reader. If you become a reader, you could accomplish almost anything. So I did wanna tell you one story. I met other authors who write books, books that you kids read. You know what I learned about all my fellow authors? They all love to read. So all you kids, I hope that happens to you. Thank you, Judy Newman from Scholastic. Thank you, um, I'm trying to think of his name, Mariana. How did I do? I'm Italian. Mariana, I think that means ocean. So it's only appropriate we have an ocean book for you kids. And thank you to the uh, mayor and everyone here. See you in a few minutes. I'm gonna talk. Maybe you kids can think of good questions in your head, because maybe at the end we'll have time for questions. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you all. As principal, I just want to say that this program is going to be a game changer for these students. Um, choice and access to their own books is not only exciting, but it's also going to help every single student improve their literacy skills and most importantly, increase their joy of reading. We're also thrilled that every single teacher in the participating schools is going to get 25 books for their classroom library. This is, yeah, that's awesome, right? So on behalf of our teachers, thank you so much for making that possible. 
Now, we're going to do a quick transition so that we can prepare for Mr. Pallotta's exciting presentation. Kiddos, you're going to stay right where you are, and you're going to wait for a quick minute. While, and our special guests may come around and talk to you and say hello, but you're going to stay right where you are while we set up. Thank you so much. Welcome, author Jerry Pallotta. Hey, who knows how to do lights? Can we shut these lights off right here? Is that possible? Hey, beautiful. Hey, kids, my name's Jerry Pallotta. I'm a Boston guy. I grew up in Massachusetts, just like you kids. But you know what happened when my kids were little? My kids are little, see them? Um, that's my wife, Linda. Let's see if my clicker works. Whoa. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that. There's my son, Neil, my daughter, Jill my uh, daughter, Sheila, my son, Eric. My daughter, uh, Jill, works at Mass General, so maybe you'll run into her. So there you go. Want to see my kids now? They're big. How did they get big? I gave them food. So that's how they got big. And then I have 11 grandkids. See this kid right here? This kid right here, he's really funny. You know what he did? He stole ice cream out of the refrigerator. And his... His mother said, his mother said, put it back. And he said, give me a spoon. <laughs> Do you think my son looks like Elvis? My other guy went in the army. So there's my son. He went in the army. Massachusetts finest. So uh, he's an army ranger. Look at this. He has night vision. He has a microphone. He has a laser. He has a 50 pound pack. Nobody knows how they do it. It's 100 degrees out. He's carrying a 50-pound pack. Kids, I wrote one story in Guys Read, and after I wrote one story in Guys Read, you know what happened? I thought of 70 stories. So teachers, I started writing book, uh, short stories. I call them mini stories by Jerry Pallotta. They're all about growing up at the ocean with my 70 first cousins. So there you go. And I'm not near my, project, my uh, computer, so... I'm gonna wreck your eyeballs, ready? Here we go. Someone asked me, someone asked me if, uh, where I grew up. So there's where I grew up, right? Not on the North Pole. I grew up right there. There's my Nana's house. This is situate. It looks like Quincy. And there's my grandma, I mean, there's the house I grew up in when I was a little boy. There's my Nana's house. There's the beach, there's the rocks. There's our little boat. For those of you who go to the South Shore, that's Hum Rock Marshfield, that's Fourth Cliff. There's the North River, there's Third Cliff. And I grew up between Second and Third Cliff. And see the bay right here? Kids, the bay was full of sea life. Here's what happened. I was reading to my kids, A for apple, B for ball, C for cat. I was reading to my kids, A for apple, B for ball, C for cat. But you know what I was thinking in my head? I was thinking of all the sea creatures that live in here. I'll show you some of the sea creatures. Hey, that's a boat called a dory. And 100 years ago in Quincy, there were dories everywhere. Now people have a fiberglass boat with a motor like this. But see, that's a dory. Teachers, there's me in high school and college. I used to rake seaweed and sell the seaweed. Teachers, look, I had hair and I was skinny. And then... I used to rake seaweed. Kids, see that seaweed that's in my boat? I used to sell it to earn money. Guess what they do with the seaweed? It's in your school. I bet the principal doesn't even know. Seaweed is in your school. Want to know where it is? It's in chocolate milk. It makes the cocoa stick to the milk. Hey, I wrote a book, Dory Story. So kids, I had a dory. I worked in my dory. And I wrote a book, Dory Story. There's me in first grade. Someone said, what did you look like in first grade? There's me in first grade. There's my brother, Joey. There's my cousin, Frankie. So I grew up with, in a big family. When we were little, we caught minnows. We used to catch striped bass. Want to see, want to see one my cousin caught? I'm, I'm really not a good fisherman. I'm a guy who has lobster traps in the summer. That's my hobby. So I always think of lobsters. When they said to me, which book do you want to give all those kids in Quincy? I said, 
uh, lobster versus crab, because I catch crabs and I catch lobsters in the summer. But some of my cousins are good fishermen. Want to see the fish he caught? He caught this. And then when I was in a... Teachers, I was in Alaska and I caught this fish and it was so pretty. You know what? I'm working on putting it in one of my books. And I should have a Patriots hat on, but I didn't want anyone to know I was a Patriots fan. And then see, there's a sculpin and there's a flounder. Where was... Where was the best fishing place in the a flounder fishing place in the world? It was in Ho's Neck, Quincy, right? So there you go. There's a flounder. And then here's a whale. So kids, I went out, I went out in my dad's boat, and what happened? I saw a whale. So I thought, I'm gonna take a picture of it. You know what else I noticed? There's a seagull. There's a seagull. There's a seagull. And if you go along Wollaston Beach, you'll see seagulls flying around. When I was a kid, there were people clamming all the time when I was a kid on Wollaston Beach. And you know what? I was thinking, that's how I learned about clams. And then see, a dead whale washed up. So this is a sad story, but I was trying to think of what I could do with the whale. Someone said to me, where do you get book ideas? You know what I said? Sometimes they wash in. So there, a book idea washed in. I think I'm gonna write a book about this whale. Hey, there's me, I look like a whale. Kids, you know what? I walked out and I touched the whale. Someone said, what did you do to the whale? I touched the whale. Hey, see this bird right here? Kids, this bird wants to eat that whale. You know what I would, you know what I would tell that seagull? I would say, the whale is too big. Maybe you should go to Dunkin' Donuts. And then, there's a, there's a great white shark. So, there was a great white shark, and what happened? I said to myself, I wanna touch the great white shark, so I can tell kids that I touched a great white shark. There it is, I touched it. That's me. That's the shark. You know what happened? The captain of the boat cut the jar out of the shark. He said, I want kids to see the jaw. You know what I was thinking? I want to put the jar in one of my books so kids will know what a great white shark looks like. There's the jaw. And that's my grandson. That's my grandson, Huey. Kids, um, this is a megalodon jaw. I went to a museum and I thought, wow. They found all these really big teeth. They were walking along beaches and they found these big fossilized teeth. And what happened? They reconstructed it to show kids how big the jaw really is. That's a megalodon shark. He lived millions of years ago. So guess what happened one day? I decided I should write a book about it. Kids write me letters. Why don't you write megalodon versus mosasaurus? They said, why don't you write Megalodon versus Tyrannosaurus Rex? Why don't you write Megalodon versus Spider-Man? Kids, I thought, I thought of a good book I could write. Megalodon versus second graders. Kids, see what I did? Now you know the real story. Now you know the real story. I touched a whale, I touched a shark, and in my head, I thought of this. I'm gonna write a book about a killer whale and a great white shark. You know what I really did? Teachers, this is what I really did. I wrote a compare book. Kids, I wrote a compare book. Someone said it's a fight book. I go, nope, compare. Kids, that's a mammal, that's a fish. He breathes air, he doesn't breathe air. He has lungs, he has gills. He has smooth skin, I have smooth skin. He has teeth, he has teeth shaped like a razor blade. Kids, make a V, make a V. Put your other finger on top. See the triangle that you made? That's how big the great white shark's teeth, tooth is. Kids, put your finger up like this. That's how big, that's a great white shark tooth. Plus, you know what I learned? I learned that the great white shark, his teeth are in really hard. So when you try to, they're like our teeth, they're in hard. You know what I learned about the shark? His teeth are soft. If he bites something really hard, his, teeth his tooth would break off. You know what he does? 
He Grows a New Tooth. Kids, this is my newest book, Blue, Blue Whale versus Mosquito. But this was, the, this was the first one I did. Teachers, because of COVID, you know what happened? Because of COVID, I decided I want to write a virus book. So kids, in this book, the mosquito's carrying a virus. He wants to bite the whale. I don't know if he could bite the whale. The whale has really thick skin, really fat blubber. I don't think he could bite the whale. You know what I was thinking? Maybe he could bite him in the eyeball. Maybe he could bite him under his tongue. So there you go. Kids, this is how, where could you catch a little green crab? Quincy. And where could you catch a Jonah crab? Quincy. And then that's a ghost crab, but he lives down south. He doesn't live, he doesn't live around here. And look, that's the hole where the ghost crab lives. You know what he does? He climbs in the hole and he hides from the sun. And then at night, he comes out and scares people. He's, that's why they call him a ghost crab. And this is a, a blue crab. You know why the blue... You know why the blue crab is special? His last leg is like a flipper. He's a swimming type crab. You, you wouldn't find a blue crab in Quincy, but you might find one down the Cape. And then, kids, this crab is special. He looks like seaweed, but he's not seaweed. You know what he does? If he lives in yellow seaweed, he wears yellow. If he lives in green seaweed, he wears green. If he lives in pink seaweed, he wears pink. If he lives in mud, what do you think he wears? Mud. Kids, that's my granddaughter, and she caught a spider crab. So, kids, I decided to write a book. When I first started, I was writing alphabet books. Look at this, crab alphabet. We're from Boston, is this better? We're from Quincy, is this better? Wicked cool crab alphabet. So, should I call it crab alphabet? Or should I call it Wicked Cool Crab Alphabet? So, kids, if you were my boss, if you were my boss, would you say, let's have red letters? Or would you say, no, no, Jerry, we want blue letters. No, 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 we want red letters. No, we want blue letters. Kids, here's the cover on Amazon. It's really different. I don't think I like it. You know what else? That crab is not a, her a, a true crab, it's a hermit crab. But you kids know that. Hey, I went down the beach and there was a fish. I didn't catch it, I found it. I dragged it to my side of the beach. Want to see how big it was? When I thought, I gotta show teachers how big this tuna. This is a fish called a tuna, and uh, there, that's how big it is. That's an eel. Kids, you know what I was thinking in my head? I was thinking of this, T for tuna, E for eel, C for crab, L for lobster. That's what I was thinking in my head. And then, ready? I went down the beach one day, and the water was calm. So some days, the water's your best friend. Another day, I went down the beach. It was really rough, and it was smashing into the houses. And kids, this is a lobster buoy in, in, a, in my neighborhood and in Quincy. People have lobster traps. Look at this. The buoy marks where the trap is. Purple, pink, that's my sister Cindy. Or yellow, red, yellow, that's my neighbor. How about this, orange, black, orange? That's me, but that's my son's buoy. This family has blue, yellow, blue. And this family has red, yellow, green. And that's me, red, blue, gray, red. Red, blue, gray, red. I pull the rope, see the rope right there? I pull the rope up and I caught a lobster. Kids, guess what a lobster did to me? I'm really mad. It didn't pinch me. It didn't bite me. It didn't snap at me. You know what it did? He stole my coffee. Hey, this one has eggs. This one has eggs. And I can't keep a lobster with eggs. I can't keep a lobster with eggs. I have to throw her back in the ocean. Kids, you know what I like to do? Just like you kids, I had wonderful teachers. You know what my teacher said? Every day you should try to learn a new word. Or they said, be a lifelong learner. 
That's what I try to do. I try to learn every day. Kids, want to learn a new word? I don't think the teachers know this word. Ready? It has flaps under its tail. You know what they're called? Swimmerettes. So today, today you can go home and say, Mom, Dad, I learned a new word. Swimmerettes. And then this one was in a fight and he lost his claw. But lobsters grow their claws back. Hey, there's a guy who writes books. Maybe you'll see him someday. There's my son, the soldier. There's my kids goofing off. There's my buddy, Elizabeth. She's showing you how to hold the lobster. If you hold it like a baseball, the claws can't get you, the leg can't get you, the tail can't get you. Hey, kids, you ready? Guess what happened? Someone caught a blue one. Someone caught an orange one. Parents, teachers, that is not cooked. He's alive. Someone caught a yellow one. Someone caught a white one. Hey, see the yellow one? You know what? You know what a kid in first grade told me? It's a banana lobster. Kids, here's how the trap works. Um, trap, rope, buoy. So I learned all about this. And when I wrote the book, Lobster versus Crab, I was thinking, I got to teach this to all those kids in Quincy. Look at this. That's a crab. That's a lobster. How can I get them in there? I put dead fish in there. Fish heads, fish guts, fish bones. And then look, there's one that weighed eight pounds. Here's one that weighed 28 pounds. Here's one my nephew caught. All right, the next one, the next one is so big, you kids are going to be scared. Should I show it? Here we go. That's what I do for hobby teachers. I take people lobstering. I hope I take the mayor of Quincy lobstering. I hope I take... The Speaker of the House lobster in. Hey, see all the different colors? And then this is a fish my daughter caught. It's called a sea raven. Here's what it looks like up close. There's a sea raven. Jellyfish, starfish, how to hold a starfish. Hey, when I was eight years old, a whale washed up. And when the whale washed up, I couldn't believe how big it was. But I kept it in my head, and I said, someday, I'm going to write a book about that. So, kids, there's a lighthouse, and then here's my very first book. Teachers come up to me, and they say, what was your first book? I wrote a book about the ocean. I put a goosefish in the book. Kids, want to see a real goosefish? Here's a real goosefish. Oh, no. I found too many H's. Before I started Who Would Win books, I wrote alphabet books. Oh, no. Too many H's. Hake, herring, halibut, hammerhead shark, humpback whale, horseshoe crab, hermit crab. I only found one Q. Where could you find a cohog? That's a cohog. Where could you find a cohog? Quincy. And then see this? I couldn't find an X. You know what I did? By the way, I forgot to tell you kids something. How... How did the clams get, who drew the clams? The illustrator. His name was Frank. He drew the clams. Why did he draw the clams? I paid him money. I asked him to draw a haddock. I paid him money. I didn't draw the pictures, but on this page, I couldn't find anything. I said, just paint water. Here's what I wrote. We cannot think of any fish whose name begins with the letter X, can you? Oops, we found one. X is for Xiphius gladius. Then I wrote a bird book. Want to see a mistake? See these two baby birds? Those are robins. You know what the mistake is? That's a chicken egg. Oh, no, I made a mistake. I put bats in the book. Bats aren't birds. Here's what I wrote. B is for bat. Hey, wait a second. Bats are not birds. Bats are mammals. Get out of this book, you bats. And then, now that the bats are gone, let's find a bird whose name begins with the letter B. You know what I thought of? Bluebird, Blackbird, Blue Jay, Bobolink, Baltimore Oreo, Bald Eagle. How do you like this? Blue-footed booby. Crocodile bird. 
Kids, I wrote a bug book. Want to see a, bu a bug I was afraid of when I was little? When I was your age, you know what I was afraid of? I was afraid of dragonflies. S someone told me that's a sewing needle. That's not true. Someone told me he bites your brain and lays eggs in your brain. That's not true. And I didn't like horse flies. Look what I wrote. If one of them lands on you, be careful. Yikes, push it away. You know what I wanted to write? If one of them lands on you, it really kills. It feels like it ripped a chunk out of your leg. Kids, I was on Wollaston Beach and a horse fly bit me and it really hurt. You know what I should write? If one of them lands on you, squish him. No, I should write this. I don't think, hey kids, I don't think teachers would like this, but I was thinking of writing this. If one of them lands on you, bite his head off. This is a moth. This is a moth, but a girl told me it's not a moth. A girl in second grade said, it's a man with a mustache. I go, no, it's a moth. No, it's a man with a mustache. Kids, this is my moth book. One day I said, I'm gonna write a moth book. Look. I was afraid to call it a moth book. I called it not a butterfly alphabet. I told the illustrator what to do. Kids never get to see this. This is what it looked like when I was working on the book. Kids think it looks like that when I work on it. No, it looked like this. I told the illustrator, put a cow moth here, put a moon moth here, put an emperor moth here. Then you know what I told her? Put the, names of the, book, the name of the book up here and put our names down here. I don't know what happened. Her name's over there. My name's over here. But then when the book came out, my name was over there. I don't know what happened. But there's a cow moth. There's a moon moth. There's an emperor moth. Kids, I have an icky car with an icky plate. You know why? I wrote icky books. Icky bug alphabet, icky bug counting, icky bug shapes, icky bug colors. Kids, I need your help. Should this be the cover? Or should this be the cover? Should this be the cover? How should this be the cover? Want to see a secret? The lady, a lady flew this plane. There she is right there. The guy who painted the book put her in the clouds. See her right there? There she is. And then this one has no windows. It just has a window by the door. This one has no chair. So one day I said, I'm not going to write an animal book this year. I'm going to write non-animal, non-fiction. Kids, you know what I did? I wrote an airplane book. I wrote a jet book. I wrote a construction book. I wrote a, um, a boat book. Hey, look, there's no wheels. You know why there's no wheels? Think. Why is there no wheels? There's no airports. It's the first plane. There's no airports. Kids, this one had three wings. This one had two bodies. And this one crashed. Here's what I wrote. Oh no, a plane crashed. Is anyone hurt? Did the pilot survive? Were there passengers? Did it crash into anyone's house? We are sorry about the crash, but there's nothing to worry about. Look at this. That's a real crash. My uncle, my uncle crashed right into a house, but he didn't get hurt. It's okay to show you kids. He didn't get hurt. You know what happened? The plane got smashed, the house got smashed, but nobody was in the house. Then the firemen and the fire ladies came and they rescued him. Kids, see how there's no words right here? A teacher told me to show this to you kids. See how there's no words? I didn't write the words yet. See the J? That's a Jenny airplane. J, Jenny. So here's the words I wrote. That's not my handwriting, but those are the words I wrote. Kids, look at this. In the 1920s, I scratched that out. I wrote the early years of flying. Look at this. Pilots earn their money. A teacher said, show the kids what it's like when you rewrite the book. Rewrite the book. Kids, should I write pilots earn their money or pilots earn their cash? Or pilots earn their paycheck? Pilots earn their pay. Pilots earn their salary. Kids, should I say pilots earn their moolah? Should I say Pilots are in their dough? Should I say pilots are in their debit card? Kids, look at this. I scratched this one out. 
I wrote it over again. I know you kids can read this because you are from Quincy. Ready? Flying at the crowd. Flying at the crowd. Is this better diving at the crowd? Flying at the crowd? Diving at the crowd. How about this? Flying upside down or flying loop-de-loops? Flying upside down or flying loop-de-loops? How about this? Don't try this at home. Kids, there it is. When I finished writing it, we printed it in the book. Remember there was no words? Now the words are in there. We printed it in the book. Hey, I saw that jet. What happened? I wrote a jet book. Here's a jet I had trouble with. I couldn't find a jet for O. I looked everywhere. You know what I found out? This is a blackbird. He should be on the B page. B is for blackbird. What happened? I found out he used to be called Oxcart, so I put him on O. That's what my book looked like when I'm working on it. You kids never get to see that. I scratch words out. I wrote new words. I wrote new sentences. And then I wrote a Beatle book. Teachers, this is the first day. Look, I wrote 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way to 32. Do you know my books are 32 pages long? So I try to find a beetle for every letter. Hey, I found a really nice beetle. I told the guy to paint it. B, bombardier beetle. He sprays gas. C, cucumber beetle. He has a funny name. D, dung beetle. He eats poop. Kids, bees have wings on the outside. I wanted to teach you kids a lesson. Look at this. Bees are not beetles. Bees have wings on the outside. Beetles have wings on the inside. Bees have wings on the outside. Beetles have wings on the inside. Spiders don't have any wings. Look at this. He has eight legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When I saw that tarantula, you know what I did? I wrote a Who Would Win book. Tarantula versus scorpion. Kids, look at this. I looked at you kids. You have two eyes. Look at this. He has eight eyes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight eyes. So I wrote an eyeball book. And then I wanted to write a spider book. I did write a spider book. Tarantula versus scorpion. Kids, I, I never finished the book. I never finished the book. And then I saw a secretary bird. What happened? I wrote rattlesnake versus secretary bird. There's one I saw in Africa. Kids, I thought this secretary bird was going to kick a snake and eat it. He didn't kick a snake. You know what he did? He was eating grasshoppers. And then, I, should I write a book of small horses? I can't see you, so come over here. Kids. This kid rode an elephant to school. What are you telling me? Five minutes? Hey, okay. Kids, this kid rode an elephant to school, and what happened? I, these kids rode a bicycle bus. I wrote a book, How Will I Get to School? I saw a triceratops fossil. I was at a museum in Boston, and I wrote Triceratops versus Spinosaurus. Ready? Here we go. I wrote Killer Will, Great White Shark, Lion versus Tiger. Polar bear versus grizzly bear. Kids, how big, how big is a tiger? Is that tiger real? Yes. Is it alive? No. And then they told me I couldn't have a green cover. What should I do? What should I do? Should I have a yellow cover? Should I have a purple cover? Should I have a red cover? Look at this. Here's a mistake I made. That's a Tyrannosaurus rex. That's a Velociraptor. Kids, guess what? The Velociraptor is only this big. How can he fight the Tyrannosaurus rex? He's only this big. That's like a kindergartner, and that's like a lineman on the Patriots. Hey, this one's two deep sea creatures, two arachnids, two mammals. Hippo, rhino, they both eat grass. Both eat grass. Alligator python, they eat each other. Look at, here's the book you got, lobster versus crab. And then, um, this is an alligator. I mean, I'm sorry. This is the uh, rattlesnake against the secretary bird. Here's a jaguar and a skunk. Kids, you know what? The skunk 
could spray him in the face. That's a wolverine. That's a hyena. This is coyote dingo. Teachers, these were my best-selling books last year. Shark Rumble, Dinosaur Rumble, Jungle Rumble. Teachers, the shark book so, sold so well, I decided to write a small shark book. Kids, these are small sharks. Kids, go like this. That's how big the smallest shark is. He's only eight inches long. A lantern shark. And look at this, walrus elephant seal. Okay, it's time to take some questions for kids. We can turn the lights on. Teachers, uh, whoever is here, I think this is the best way to do it. That girl, run up here. Run up here. That kid back there in the pink shirt, run up here. That kid, that girl way back there in the white shirt, run up here, run up here. This is the best way to do questions. That kid in the red shirt, run up here. Jump up on stage. You can jump up, you're young. I can't jump up. And let he's, let's see, that kid in the white shirt, run up here. Kid in the blue shirt, run up here. Way in the back. That kid way in the back, come on up here. That kid over there in the white shirt, come on up. Teachers, pick a few more kids. All right, here we go. Ready? You wanted to ask a question? Go. Um. How old am I? 71. What if you did a book where it's um, tarantula, tarantula versus centipede? A tarantula versus a centipede? Guess what I learned about centipedes? They're really good fighters. You know what I saw a centipede do? He has so many legs, he pinned a scorpion down. Then the scorpion couldn't fight. That's a good idea. Thank you for the good idea. Do I owe Quincy money? Go. How about you do farm animals rumble? Oh, I should do a farm animals rumble? Yeah. But I didn't grow up in the farm. I guess I'll have to do research and learn all about farm animals. Thank you. Go. Uh, are you still making books? Yes, I work on five or six at the same time. Want to know what I'm working on right now? I'm working on a, a book of animals all different colors, and I'm working on uh, a bat against a snake, and I'm working on uh, an ostrich against a cassowary. Those are two birds that don't fly. And then I'm working on an electric eel against a springbok. Those are some books I'm working on. Go. Um, what if you do a rooster versus a chicken? I should do a rooster versus a chicken. That sounds like my house. Come here. Go. Do you still catch animals? Uh, the only animals I really catch is in the summer, I take people lobstering. So I catch lobsters and crabs. You know what I caught in my trap one day, though? I caught an octopus by mistake. And I caught a flounder, and I caught a pollock. So sometimes I catch fish. Go. Do you... Do you have 77 book? Do I have what? 77 book. 77 books? I have 100. Thank you. What? Um, how many, um, which book do you, which kind of books do you do the most? Do you do like... Lately, in the last 10 years, I've done who would win books. Before that, I did math books and I did alphabet books. I did holiday books. I did military books. But lately, I've been doing the Who Would Win books. Thank you. Go. What if you do both of the types of Spinosaurus against each other? There's two. I should do what? There's two types. Two, take two Spinosaurus and have them fight? There's two types. Oh, there's two types? I didn't know that. You're smarter than me. I guess I'll have to do research and find out the other type. Go. Um, what you did... Rattlesnake versus a poison snake. I should do rattlesnake versus a poison snake? Yeah. yeah, I wonder what would happen. You know what I learned? You ready for this? When you bite something and you get sick, that's poisonous. When they bite you, that's venomous. So, a venomous is a snake because he bites you and he puts, he puts poison in you. Yeah. Thank you for the good idea. Go. What if you like get like one book with like 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 one book and you get two characters to team up and then another book to team up and then they fight each other? So I should have it do it do it between different books yeah. instead of just one book? Yeah. Thank you. That means I could publish more books. Thank you. 
Tell my publisher. Go. So I want to do Earth versus Jupiter and the Sun versus Rogue GH4, the new largest star. Say that again. I think you said you wanted that space. Side. He's talking about space, different Go. planets, right? I want to do Earth versus. Oh, Earth, and we would fight Neptune. No, I'm gonna do Earth versus Jupiter, and then you do the Earth space. versus Jupiter. And the sun versus V.Y. Canis Majoris? That sounds like a different galaxy. You should call Elon Musk. Hey, that's a great idea. Thank you very much. You know what? I wanted to write a... What's his name? Jaden. Jaden. I wanted to write a space book, but you know what happened? The A got squished and it became a spice book. Go. How many books did you make, huh? Uh, over a hundred. I have 30. I have 30 who would win books. I have 35 outfit books. I have 25 math books. And I have other books. Okay? Did you voice Captain Underpants? Did I write Captain Underpants? No. But you know what? I met him. You know what I wanted to do? Guess what I wanted to do? I wanted to write a book. Who would win? Mr. Who would win versus Mr. Co Mr. Captain Underpants. Good idea. Why don't you do Sun versus Jupiter? I should do what? Sun versus Jupiter. A sunfish? Oh, Saturn. Saturn versus Jupiter? Maybe they could get married because Saturn has a ring. You should do a book about all your books. I should do a book about all my books? Well, uh, I did write a, a biography called Read a Zillion Books. I did, I did do that. So, but I haven't done a book with all my books in it. Go ahead. Um, so am I doing more questions or am I stopping? This is good? Hey, go. How long have you been making books? Um, I'm 71 years old. I started when I was 32, so I've been writing books for 39 years. 39 years. It took me 39 years to get to this school. Hey, thank you, everybody. Thank you for being a wonderful audience. Thank you, Speaker Marinara. Thank you, Judy Newman. Thank you to the mayor, <coughs> Mr. Koch. And thank you to... Um, I forget his name. The spe the uh, congressman. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, teachers, for having me be the author and let me come in the school. See you later.